All right. So let's see a device independent variant of the tripartite guessing game that's going to be based on the CHSH test. So here's how we're going to set up our guessing game. There are three parties, Alice, Bob, and Eve. Alice and Bob can get inputs just as in the device independent quantum key distribution protocol. So this is two possible inputs for Alice. Instead of labeling them 0 and 1 as usual, I label them using x and z, but it's really the same thing. Bob has three possible inputs, h, h tilde, and x. And Eve just gets one possible input. So here I wrote an empty set, but really what I want to say is that she has a single possible input, x. She is not necessarily always provided an input. The reason I'm only giving Eve one input x is that I'm only interested in when is it the case that she'll be able to guess the outputs produced by the Alice uh, and the Bob device when their corresponding inputs are x and x. In the other cases, these outputs will not be part of the Rocky, so I won't ask Eve to make any prediction in that case. And so the question that we're asking is the following. Suppose that I have any three devices uh, that are set up in this way. These have been prepared by Eve beforehand. They share an arbitrary state, psi A, B, E, that I know nothing about. And I know nothing about the measurements that are performed by either of these devices. The one thing that I do know, because I'm checking as part of my protocol, is that the probability that the outputs A and B that are produced by the A and B devices, when the inputs are anything for Alice and H or H tilde for Bob, so meaning that it's not the X input, then the probability that these outputs satisfy the CHSH correlations is, and let's assume first that it's equal to the optimal winning probability in the CHSH test. What can I conclude? Well, in that case, from the analysis that we saw a couple modules ago, I know what the state of these devices must be in order to produce such inputs. In particular, I know that psi ABE must take a form where on Alice's system and Bob's system, it looks like an EPR pair, AB, tensored some auxiliary state that earlier we had called junk between A and B, but now there's also Eve. Let me include her in this. Let me not call it uh, junk out of respect for Eve. Let's call it auxiliary state. And this can involve some part on A, some part on B, and some part on E. So this assumption implies that the state must have this form. And it implies that Alice's observables associated with the inputs X and Z, let's call them A0 and A1. So A0 is Alice's observable on input X. And this observable is up to local rotation equivalent to performing a Pauli X on the A part tensored identity on the A prime part. I also know something about Alice's observable Z. I only also know things about Bob's observables. But in fact, this is not important right now. Because what is this telling us already? It's telling us that when Alice performs this measurement, two things. First of all, because this is a Pauli X performed on half of an EPR pair, the output is going to be uniformly distributed. So the probability that this A is equal to zero conditioned on Alice's input theta a being equal to x, it's going to be exactly a half. And now not only is it going to be uniformly distributed by itself, but because the state is a tensor product here and the x operator is being performed on the phi plus part of the state, which is uncorrelated with Eve, this means that I can add an e here, Eve's system, and it's still the case that with respect from the point of view of Eve, Alice's output is uniformly distributed, which means that the probability that Eve can guess Alice's output, given she knows that the input for Alice was an x and her system, then this is a half. She cannot guess better than random. And that's it. We have perfect security for our guessing game. As a consequence of this, the entropy of Alice's output conditioned on her input being an x and the E system is equal to 1, which is the maximum we could hope for for a bit. Excellent. Perfect guessing game. The only thing that we'd want to look at a little bit more closely is what happens 
in the case where the winning probability is not exactly the optimal winning probability. Because there's always going to be a little bit of noise. So how about we relax our assumption to the probability not being half plus 1 by 2 root 2, but we allow a little noise fraction, eta. In this case, we won't have the consequence that the state is exactly equal to an EPR pair, we'll only have it approximately. And here you have to work out the details, and it's actually important to work out the details because these will, in the end, govern the key rate and they'll govern the efficiency of our protocol. Let me just tell you the result. The result that you can show is that the way the min entropy of Alice's output will scale is that you'll still get this one, but you'll get a dependency on eta that scales with the square root of eta. And it's important to figure out what the constant is here, but I'm not going to do it uh, in this video. So to conclude, what we've seen is that this variant of the tripartite guessing game lets us enforce the same conclusion as the other variant that we had seen earlier, but under weaker assumptions. Earlier, we needed to know what measurements the Alice device was performing, computational Hadamard. Now we don't need to know this anymore. We have a little bit of a more stringent test to perform. We need to perform the CHSH test instead of simply checking equality of outputs when the inputs were the same. But provided we perform this test, which we can also perform classically just uh, by checking the CHSH condition, then we are able to derive a bound on the guessing probability of Eve. And that's the only thing that we were missing in order to obtain a proof of security of our DIQKD protocol. So we'll look into that uh, in the next video.